And as soon as I saw it, I, I said, sold so freaking fast. That would be me. Right. That would be you. Totally. There she is. Wow, she is tang orange. We're gonna pop in some heads up shampoo and conditioner. It, it will come out, but <laughs> do I have the patience is the question. And we're back. Hello, welcome back to the channel. Hi. This is a fun one. Christopher has no idea what is inside this box, but we, I, I am very excited. I bought the, what is inside here from Diane Drake's doll shop. She has a wonderful doll shop. She's called Diane's Dolls. And I bought this at our Toast to 24 event. And as soon as I saw it, I, I said sold so freaking fast because I just, I need you to see this. Okay, okay. go ahead. I know, I know <laughs> one word about this. I said hair. I know, I know hair. And I like, said, we're going to film the hair video after lunch. And then I was like, I only know. I, I said. Well, but. We, we like hair around here. <laughs> we do. Moment of truth. Moment of truth. Okay. <laughs> Diane Stalshaw. Okay, Diane Stalshaw. <laughs> She's in Stanford. <laughs> <laughs> You're kidding. That's amazing. I didn't even know this existed. This is a 1970s Farrah Fawcett glamour center. Are guys. you <laughs> kidding? Oh my God. So I I wanted nothing more as a child than a styling head and was never <laughs> had, you know, had the opportunity for my own. You are reliving your childhood here, Christopher. And I can't think of a better, like, <laughs> hair model than Farrah Fawcett. Fawcett. Are you kidding me? We are also having a Grace wig wow. made in the Farrah Fawcett. <gasps> yes, we, we are. Yeah, in her hair. So anyway, but are you dying? This like, is amazing. This, I don't even want to, I do obviously want to open this, but this is like, the, the box alone is so cool. I trust <laughs> Migo with my life and that is, that is such a wonderful. Look at the girl on the thing. side, like that would be me. Right. That would be you. Totally. Oh my in God. In the 70s. If this was on TV, I would have to get it. So it, what does it include? A Ferris vinyl signature bag, which I don't know what her signature vinyl Hopefully bag is. Hopefully it's in there. A compact with four makeup colors and a lip brush. You get, oh my gosh, you have eyelashes, adhesive, a powder puff, and a sponge. Okay, so you get a makeover the face too. I'm, I'm gonna die. <laughs> I'm gonna poop myself. I'm gonna die. <laughs> Uh, six rollers, two barrettes, a hairbrush and comb, <laughs> bobby pins, two braided ribbons, and two elastic hair ties. You guys. This is phenomenal. I mean, like, that artwork alone. <laughs> I can imagine myself at, like, nine running home from school to, like, gossip about the people I didn't like to Farrah Fawcett, <laughs> you know, <laughs> over a bowl of mac and cheese. Like, oh, you wouldn't believe what Mrs. Smith did today. Well, let's hope it's all in there. So my guess is that she's going to be either in like well-loved shape and we've got like one eyelash and nothing else or it's going to be like you know crisp and shiny i saw one photo and okay. i i clicked buy it now because well, i was like this is good fingers crossed okay so i oh my god i see a bobby pin so far so good we have one bobby pin <laughs> never better oh my god peanuts my favorite okay so what an ominous start to this so we don't have all the stuff First impression, she's very light, a little bit noisy, and I've got... Somebody could have already made her over, too, because it came with right. all that. Right, you could be covered in crayon, for all I know. How do you put makeup on plastic? Well... Is it doable? <laughs> that's a tale as old as time. That's the, you know, the, the real question. It's like, well, how do you do that? Because it's not, it's not easy. Okay, well... <laughs> <laughs> there she is. Wow, she is tang orange. She, she is. She is. She is sun tanned, and also that is a gnarly part if I've ever seen one. Keep talking because I'm gonna pull up a picture. That actually, that the resemblance is not bad. That's a really good sculpt. But she, she could use some eyelashes. It looks like we've got some actually a very pretty sort of like iridescent mint frosty eyeshadow, which of course from the '70s is a must. I wonder if that's original or if it was. I bet. I bet it is, but it's probably the stuff she came with. The hair is in really great shape. That set is like really nice. Okay. So this is, this is what I found this on, on Pinterest this morning. And this is what somebody did with one of these mannequins. And I want you to do the same thing. Oh no. Oh, that's gorgeous. She's yeah. She's, you think you can? Well, I bet you can. Not with people makeup, but yeah, I totally, that would be very fun. Wouldn't that be fun? That's a full repaint. Like they fully repainted that doll, but she is gorgeous. Um, We're going to put the picture on also, the screen, but that, my God, look how pretty that is. Yeah, she's gorgeous. I wonder if, okay, so here's what happened. The the thatched part is just all on one side. So she'll have to be like rebrushed and styled. But lucky for us, I have a lot of those tools to restyle. Um, this is going to be, this is going to be very fun. But she's in, she's in some well-loved shape and we don't 
exactly have one eyelash, but we do have a couple bobby pins, and that's a place to start. We actually do have eyelashes here. And, we do. We um, could put... They're human size. Yeah, I bet I could. Because you put those human... No, were they doll size? You put the doll size ones on Grace. They're like... They're like large doll size lashes. And I think this is a, you know, that makes sense for her. She's a, she's a large doll. <laughs> yeah, she's gonna... Is that like lipstick or something? Lip gloss and her hairline? She's been played with. And, and I, good is for it jointed? Her. Uh, it no. no. What a steal, right? She is, she's amazing. <laughs> I had to buy this. A Farrah Fawcett I bust. said Christopher was going to scream. <laughs> what do you know? I, I cannot wait to redo her hair, though. Yeah, no, I, like, I she think... She needs to look like Farrah Fawcett hair by the end of this video. Okay. <laughs> a challenge accepted. <laughs> I'll go see what I can do. Oh, there's another one. So, yeah, someone just, like, fully roller set her and put her pins in. But with a, a little brushing and some, some conditioner, and I don't know, maybe we can track down the pieces that she would have come with otherwise wise over time and, and sort of create a, a little thing. I do like that she's got some octopus uh, tentacle suction cups to oh, sort yeah. of Oh yeah, so it'll stay secure. on the table? Well, uh, <laughs> maybe not. That's old rubber. Um, this is from the 70s. <laughs> it's not. like, uh oh, did I they was, break? One of them did. I was too ambitious. It's okay. Flew too close to the sun? No, I, I paid $25 for this from Diane's doll shop and it was a steal. That's amazing. Yeah. But those cheekbones. She's got a great it's facial beautiful. structure. Yeah. Just very, very nice. Well, well, again, well. They need to, to make a bust of you with your hair. Oh, God. So Don't give anybody ideas. Off. No. <laughs> not not VDC endorsed. Oh, God. <laughs> not the stamp of approval. It would be such a, a hot seller. Yeah. <laughs> But I cannot wait. We're gonna we're gonna have a moment. Maybe a little bit of hair. We're gonna hairspray have to go to the clip and curl in the hair. Yeah, we're gonna need. Yeah, a there's full, definitely some product in there. A salon set, but uh, stay tuned because at some point in the near future, I will make sure that this is something happens with her because this is this is a little bit flying nun right now. Um, God, she's pretty. For twenty five dollars. Twenty five dollars. Not bad. Love her. A whole bust and six bobby pins. That's right. That's a deal. We are employing the uh, <laughs> dolls part hair kits that we have here. And uh, I, I don't know, you guys. We're going to see where this goes because this is this is some crispity, crunchity hair. But I believe in us. I have faith. This is going to be fun. We just had a joke, Christopher, because I was like, what is your job? Like, <laughs> some days you must be like, what? What is going on? Some days I don't know what my job is. And today <laughs> it's trying to give a... a makeover to Farrah Fawcett. I love this. She's fantastic. The landing strip is not, but we'll be giving her a little bath and uh, <laughs> we're going to pop in some heads up shampoo and conditioner because I hear that this really does wonders. I actually haven't it's used it yet. It's our first time. So I'm excited to give it a try and see what this does. We'll probably use lots of the detangler and I, don't, I mean like that is some, that is some hard hair. It, it's not not hay. So I'll see what I can do with it. But give her a little wash, and we've got some lashes around here, and maybe we'll see what I can conjure up on the face, too. So we're gonna try to give a little sudzing to Vera. I'm starting with some Formula 911 from Twin Pines, uh, and I'm just gonna give her a dunk and see what happens. So I don't know what sort of sins and bad life decisions uh, she's seen. So we're gonna we're gonna give her a little a little scrubbing here, um, and I might just start with a Formula 911 on the hair because I I mean, what else am I gonna do? And see if any of this eyeshadow comes off. Probably not, but like. I hope it does because I really want you to redo her makeup. It's I feel like it is. Look at it's coming right off. Look at that. One eye is definitely less than the other. It's been there for God knows how long. It's coming off. You could, it'll come off. Look Great. at that. She'll be fun to like, if I could even get some soft pastels and like fully repaint her, it should be a lot of fun to do. Oh, I want her to look like that. <laughs> that, that, I'll show you the blog. It's yeah. a blog that a, a woman did. I saw the same post just like. She like, didn't show her Google steps. Search. She just showed like her final thing. I and her I... steps. <laughs> I was a makeup artist for a decade. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> That's true. Not fair. <laughs> we'll see what, what happens. But yeah, already this is a good start. Oh my gosh, she already looks so much better. I feel like I'm choking her. I feel bad. Sorry, I'll try uh, try being more gingerly. The problem is like you need to like brace her face because she's not articulated, but she does sort of wiggle. Yeah, I think we're cleaning up pretty nicely. <laughs> this has got to be one of your favorite videos we've this ever is, done. <laughs> this is wild. Especially for the like the ambush of like not knowing what this was to be like you're giving a full makeover to Farrah Fawcett today. <laughs> Happy Friday! Thank you for always being um, game to do 
fun things. Oh, sure. I mean, I like, especially for the, like, the ambush of, like, not knowing what this was, to be like, you're giving a full makeover to Farrah Fawcett today. <laughs> Happy Friday. Thank you for always being game to do fun things. Oh, sure. I mean, I like, you know, it, it keeps me on my toes, and, um, you know, something about spontaneity, something about life and fun and spontaneity, right? Oh, also, it's totally fun. What a fun, like, she's such a fun, I don't know, Relic feels rude, but, like, she is sort of a... Icon. Totally an icon. She is an icon. That, that is an appropriate use of that word. Yeah. It, truly, like, she is, she is something that you could actually describe as iconic, right? Like, David Bowie or Freddie Mercury or Madonna, they're, they have iconography, and, like, Farrah is absolutely absolutely one of those people. Well, I consider an icon somebody that, like, if I if I said who it was, my dad would know. Right. And, and like, it evokes something really specific. Yes. You yeah. say Farrah Fawcett, everyone knows. Right. And then you think of her hair. And, right. like, anyone that has that kind of global recognition is an totally, icon. Totally. Totally. But, like, your new jumpsuit you got from Sheen, not no. iconic. You can put that away. You can, you know, use that word responsibly. Otherwise, every other word loses its value. <laughs> that's, my, that's my soapbox take for the day. I love that our shop is so full that we kind of have to set up little stations around here but oh i got like vignettes all over the place <laughs> there's you know and each one is subject to change for the next day they all take you know turns yeah already oh look look, at, look how pretty she looks now right yeah that's a great start i'll take that promising start let's see if this helps uh comes out this way this stuff really is formula incredible. 911 we're, we're these products are fantastic you guys so this is Again, Twin Pines. We buy it through Dolls Parts. Barbara, I think, owns Twin Pines, or she's in oh, charge she? of it, or something. Yeah. So this is this is what you get stuff off of Dolls with. It's amazing. It is amazing. We buy the big one. It's expensive, and it's and it's worth every penny. And then this this is our first time, right? Using the shampoo. Yeah, I've never I've never played with these. And why is the conditioner smaller? I always need so much more conditioner than I do shampoo, but maybe a little goes a long way. Yeah, maybe it's a strong impact stuff. Yeah. Know. The the texture of Formula 911 actually has a little bit of slip to it, so it, of course, does not replace a conditioner, but for something like hair, as long as it's synthetic like this, I imagine that's actually going to be a really good step one to, if, if you wanted to begin doing really light, you know, wide tooth comb detangling might be a good thing to do in this texture, where then you can go back in with like a proper brush later. I don't know, I may not get all of that pink out, we'll see. It, it will come out, but <laughs> do I have the patience is the question. Once the hair is set, I don't even think you'll notice that. So I'm gonna give her a good little sudsing all over and we'll show you what happens with some shampoo and conditioner. Uh, we've given her a little shampoo and condition, a little detangling. I will say we are, are thin on the hair department. <laughs> we have we have only so much hair. So I think, not that like, she has lost any necessarily, but I don't think she had a ton to begin with. So some of the really fantastic before and afters I think have either been rerouted, if you can even reroute this hard plastic, or have been wigged. But I think I'm gonna give her like a little boil set. We're gonna see how much of this we can smooth out with just some really hot water. And I don't know, we have a part now. We have we have a mostly thatched part, which is more hey, than we could say before. It looks good. And you know, coming from somebody who also has very fine hair, when my hair is freshly washed and curled, it's like 10 times fuller than right. two or three day old hair. Yeah, so. when you're a drowned rat. <laughs> That's my mother would say. Right. So it's, I know it's going to look good. And I love her fresh face. Yeah. Nice and clean. She I'm looks, excited for the makeup, but it, she looks nice. But it does look good. Yeah. I've got tepid ambitions. <laughs> I don't have, I don't have really incredible ambitions, you know, sights set on something spectacular. But I think, I think we've got a, a good, a good place to go from. We do. And welcome to the back room of the doll shop. If you're new here <laughs> with us, this is, this is where we get all the work done back here. And then this out here is our gallery. So you can see where we were filming over there and where we have a lot of our special exhibits and things that you can see and enjoy. So behind the curtain, this is where we live. We call it our cinder block day home because we spend so much time here, but uh, this is it. This and is if it. you came here, this is what it would look like. But we'd offer you a sparkling water and tell you to pull up a chair and play dolls. Yeah, enjoy a, a wet Sarah Fawcett. Sarah. <laughs> Sarah Fawcett. <laughs> so, uh, that's the, the, the long lost evil twin, Sarah Fawcett. She's back. <laughs> so I just put on a tea kettle of boiling water. It's not currently boiling, but if you can see, it's still a little bit steamy. And I'm just gonna pour this right over the especially crispity parts. It's it's plastic, right? So you're, this would not be 
a viable option if it were a dry heat, but because it's submerged in water, you're able to keep that from scalding and, and burning. And this is a step that like, there is still a little bit of conditioner still in the hair, a little bit of detangler. So as that's sort of soaking in that hot water, it's also still slick and becoming detangled and whatever. We are, we are trying, with fingers crossed, to like cook the hair back into a, a smooth follicle so that it doesn't look frayed on the ends. This step sometimes takes many, many attempts and sometimes it doesn't ever really straighten completely at all. But we're gonna see what, this is round three. So I'm gonna see what a little bit more of this does. It's entirely possible, like everything is pretty much one length, so it's possible that I will decide <laughs> to give her a little trim. If it's sort of crispy anyway, and, you know, she's known for this, like, really blown out, sort of tiered, layered, big cloud of hair. That will be difficult to do with everything at one length. So I may, depending on if this is a good idea, she only has so much hair, I might give her a little trim to give her some layers and then sort of roll it out backwards and see what happens. But in the meantime, we're gonna see if this is very successful, and if not, go from there. <laughs> Keep a tea kettle handy and, um... Again, I have I have tepid ambitions uh, and, and hopes for this, but you know, uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. So I've decided I'm gonna give her a little bit of a trim. I think it will be helpful in the long run. She's just a little bit scraggly. So just started by sectioning it out by like v vague sections where I might want some layers, keeping some room for flowy bangs to sort of fold backwards. And I just wanted you to see like, where we're going with this. So I'm just gonna take, uh, it's damp hair, it's not dry. And actually for, for dull hair like this, I think it would actually be more helpful to see this dry so you see what like actually really is crisp. But like all of that stuff, I just wanna trim just the very, the very, very ends of it without really changing the shape or the length or anything, just a little bit of extra crisp off the ends. Also, I'm not a hairdresser, you guys. I like, I can fake my way through it, but like I, I do not do hair, so. We're going to just take off the very ends, kind of tugging through as I go to make sure that I'm still keeping some sort of, what's the word? I, d I don't want it to feel blunt. I still want something that's a little bit on the, I don't know, sort of, sort of natural side. So I've trimmed up, oops, I just messed that up. I've trimmed up the back layer and I've given her a little bit of texture on the side, one nice little swoop. I don't know what I'm doing, but I think I think that in a roller is gonna give us some really nice shape, okay? Also, her real layers would have started much higher, but because of the proportions of this head and the doll, I don't think that's worth trying to to make super, super accurate. I think it's gonna be more interesting to have it be just, just a little bit smoother than it was. The bangs were all one length with the rest of the hair, um, and that's just, that simply won't do, uh, <laughs> because, you know, that's not the shape of her hair. So I'm gonna kind of give the same sort of nice slope bangs here so that when you roll it back, you get some nice layers. And then I'll try to do some similar layers on these sections in a moment, but that's sort of what we're playing with so far. This is so fun. Are you having fun? It's a nice challenge. It's a different, I'm, I'm not used to this haircutting gig, but it's a really nice, fun change of pace and a very exciting challenge. So we'll see if I totally butcher her and ruin someone's childhood Farrah Fawcett. I certainly hope not. If this is a like lifetime collector piece that you have always dreamt of having, then I'm so sorry. I, I The I, drama. This is I, so dramatic. Like, well, I hope our people are glued to the screen because I'm care. glued to the screen. <laughs> no, I am. I care too. Oh, good. Well, I know it's going to be good though, so I'm relaxed about it. Well, I, I appreciate your, your faith in me. We'll see. I will, I will say that the texture of the hair already looks much, much, much better, even before the trim. Like that, that I couldn't really get rid of, but it's okay, because I'm not gonna keep it. <laughs> but all of that nice shine and texture, like that's that's something we didn't have before. So at least that's promising. If nothing else, she will have conditioned <laughs> smooth air. It might be flat and lifeless, but you know, we'll, we'll give it a shot. I'm having so much fun with this video and we are shipping right now and doing so many things in the doll shop. But what we do is we film and we ship and we do our doll shop things all at the same time. So I'm very grateful to have have a good team but if you want to stay in on the what are what is coming up what videos are coming up what we have in the works we have an event schedule on the virtual doll convention website so just click on the virtual doll convention website and click on the upcoming videos of the event schedule it's on a tab right on the home page and you can see what we have going on so we're excited about that well i just came over and noticed that christopher <laughs> took a lot off she didn't have much hair to begin with no but I mean, that looks a lot fuller, doesn't it? 
Yeah. She's got some really choppy layers, you guys. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> it's not, it's not good. But we are going to get some rollers in this and give her like a wet set and see how it goes. Cause I think we're starting to get, I think we're starting to get a shape that those bangs are gonna be in my way. We'll see, we'll see where it's going. I don't think it's good. I don't think it's good, but <laughs> uh, I don't. That's not a gag. I think it's, it's bad, but I'm gonna see what I can do with it. And I also wanna see what this does dry and with like a, a full, a full set because a lot of this like blunt shape will be something that we can get a lot of volume with. All this ideally is gonna be tucked back in on itself anyway. You may not see a whole lot of it. So I'm gonna clean this up and sort of see where it takes us. That's good. So while Christopher is mentioning bad hair, I'd like to take a moment and talk about some good hair. And our friend and customer Kendra has, has phenomenal hair, so full, just great hair. She has cut it off and, and, and donated it for wigs in the past and things like that. But when we announced that we were doing this video, she sent some photos of her beautiful Farrah Fawcett hair straight from the 1970s, gorgeous. And so let's revel in that for a second. Take it away, Kendra. Hello, welcome back. So it has been a full week since we were last doing this. We have been very busy shipping and now we are back in action. We shipped all of our wonderful land and sea and every and all of our dolls and Christopher is back. How's Hello. it going, Christopher? Oh, it's going. How's, you know what? This looks good. That's very generous of you. It's a little I, short. I appreciate that. So known famously for her very short locks, this is Farrah Fawcett. <laughs> no, actually, I don't, I don't love this. So I don't have super incredible expectations, but I will say, I think it's, I think it's workable. Now, the reason why I trimmed so much off was because the hair came, everything was just one length before. And I think the real, like, secret sauce to Sarah, to Farrah's uh, signature look is big billowing flowing tears of hair, which you're not really going to get if everything's one length. So I thought, you know, no matter how much, you know, volume or how many rollers or whatever I put in this like one length mop of hair, it's not going to do anything. This originally would have come with like falls and clumps of hair that you could sort of tack on to give the appearance of maybe extensions or whatever. We had very few accessories. In fact, it were only a couple bobby pins. So <laughs> I'm, I'm improvising. It's somewhere between like the sitcom Friends character, Rachel, Dusty, <laughs> America's Most Beautiful yeah. Doll. It's, yeah, it's right. a little bit giving Dusty. Dusty's uh, it's shack. It's giving dusty. <laughs> so we're gonna see what I can manage with this. I'm gonna get it all wet again. Now that now that it's dry and I can sort of see the shape, it might be easier to smooth some of this out. I don't have proper shears that you would use for hair, but I am gonna see what I can manage. And then we're gonna put some rollers in it. And then I also went to my favorite local craft store today and got some really nice artist quality soft pastels that if you're trying to get like a really soft, diffused, blown out, almost airbrushed effect for doll paint, specifically talking about like rouge, blush, contour, eyeshadow, things like that, will, I think it's very difficult to get the appearance of something smooth and blended with just like acrylic paints. So I brought some of those over and I got some lashes. We're going to give her a full thing. My, my main complaint as a makeup artist for the last decade is whoever decided that that eyebrow choice was appropriate because it is a hate crime. The <laughs> Those, Stop. the eyebrows are atrocious. <laughs> they are. Maybe you can fix them up. I'm personally offended by the <laughs> eyebrows put on this poor head. So I'm going to see if I can actually take them off completely and then give her a fresh new, nice, soft, open brow bone and, and some, <laughs> some like not hungover sort of facial features because it's, she, she, the sculpt is amazing. The paint could be, I think, better. So thanks for joining us on part two of this and we'll see where it goes. I told Christopher to go really lightly because the acetone can also take away the doll. Acetone can be really precarious. I mean, if you can, I would recommend using just alcohol for lots of stuff like this, but factory paint often doesn't come off with just alcohol. It's coming off though, look at um, that. So, and actually what's nice about this is that it's not like smudging and making a big murky mess because that's that sometimes happens too. 
Be be very careful with acetone, just in general, but there's no real way to say what this will do over time. Like the, the chemical composition of this head is now changing, and I can't tell you what that's gonna do in several years. So being that I've <laughs> already lobbed off her beautiful locks, I, I suppose I should be more concerned about what happens to her chemical composition. Um, we're just gonna we're gonna play it by yeah, ear. We're, we're we don't recommend you do any of this. Like. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can. I am not. This is not a. Well. This is not a how to. This is you're in our doll shop, peeking over our shoulder, looking at the shenanigans that are happening here, which is Christopher is spending his day making over a Farrah Fawcett mannequin. <laughs> You know, and I, I try to tell my friends, you know, like what I do and every time they don't believe me. I'm very grateful to have such a properly ridiculous job um, that is, is very silly and very fun. Um, we do have a lot of fun. It's it's a unique blend of various responsibilities that I have or expectations that I, you know, sort of cycle through in a day. And then every once in a while it gets exceptionally silly and I get to do something like this. Yeah, this is, this is more me like <laughs> fooling around. Already, I know that she has nothing, but already that's so much better. I, I think those brows were so distracting. They just cut off her whole face. We're going to open those up and give her a nice big wide arched brow with a really soft brow bone. Something that really, I think something that, you know, translates more as Farrah because those those eyebrows were terrible. Oh, they're rude. Honestly, so many of us that are watching don't have eyebrows when we don't have makeup on. So we understand how Farrah looks. Yeah. I get a lot of compliments on my eyebrows and to be totally transparent, I've told everyone I I have the mic microbladed, which is like a semi-permanent tattoo type thing, and I still fill them in on top of having them microbladed. Eyebrows are such an important thing for your face, oh, yeah. and they can change your entire look. Such as the Grace doll, we we have the Sydney sculpt, which had very thin, like 1920s type eyebrows, and then the Grace ones are very, very, very thick. Looks like a totally different per person, a different yeah. face. So the way you do your brows really changes the entire structure of your. Like your bone structure. Yeah. In fact, for years when I was like young and edgy, I, I was an artist. I I bleached my eyebrows out for multiple years. Oh my gosh! I, like, didn't Do you have, have that, that picture? <laughs> no. What picture? <laughs> no, I don't. Um, but I there was I've had lots. He showed of, me that um, picture and I did not believe him. Oh yeah, no. I I have I stand by all of my various stylistic iterations of expression, <laughs> um, but I've been through a couple of them. And I'm in my, like, you know, natural long cascading curls era now. But I've, <laughs> I've been bald. I've had pink hair. I've had a mohawk. I've had a mullet. I've had a bowl cut. I've had everything you can imagine. And for a long time, I was like, I don't need my eyebrows. I don't want them. And I just, <laughs> I had white eyebrows for, like, three years. Who um, wakes up and, besides Lady Gaga, who wakes up and <laughs> thinks, you know, I don't need my eyebrows anymore. <laughs> Paul's should, over there cracking up. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I like to an have artist. Fun. You're an artist. Oh. He's an artist. Well, thank you. You um, know, because I, I'm more. I'm the. I'm the technical. I'm. I'm artistic in my own way, but I'm not artistic like this. And so I'm sitting here like, I would not shave off my eyebrows, but people who do. You know? Oh, yeah. They do. A lot I mean, of people do. When I was doing, like, full <laughs> faces on myself every day for years, I actually, I shaved off the last half of my eyebrow. <laughs> so I only had, like, I had small ones. No. But it was really easy to, like, to create different shapes every day, right? Like, if I was going to do something really exaggerated or something really small or, like, elongated or peaked or whatever, I could manipulate shape much easier when I only had, like, half of an eyebrow. Oh, stop. You're, it's true. It, that, is, that is hysterical. He is so lucky they grew back because when I was in high school, <laughs> I overplucked mine and they were never the same. Yeah. They, they never grew back the same. And it wasn't until I found the microblading, which I get touched up every year. I've been doing it for five years now. Changed my life. But yeah, don't shave off your eyebrows up there if you're watching this. Uh, yeah, I'm not telling you, you know, uh, do, as I, do as I say, not as I do. I'm not giving you advice. <laughs> um, unless you like, I don't know, go be crafty, be adventurous, be courageous. I don't know. I, I think as far as like expression goes, like, Dye your hair. It yeah. grows back. So fun. You know, do something crazy and edgy and adventurous because, like, you live once. Totally. You know, pull out teeth. Do whatever no, you want. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, we're cutting the line there. We're cutting <laughs> the line. Give many years. Who but cares? as far as the hair, though, that can that can grow back and really have fun with that. That's why I, during when, when we had our 80s month, I, I ordered all those crazy wigs, a rainbow wig. It's something I wouldn't nor normally ever do, but it was so fun. 
so. All right, he's he's gonna work on the hair a little bit. So what are we, we're, we're gonna get the curlers in. Yep, so what I'm doing now is getting it wet so that's easier to section and then it will it will set when it dries. I don't think you're gonna have much luck trying to do like a roller set on dry synthetic hair. So I might, I'm gonna get it wet and then I might even get it like just in front of a space heater and not anything, you know, warm enough to, you know, melt or misshape something, but just to give it some, to, to expedite drying time and give it something a little bit more firm when the when the rollers come out. So our lunch is here and you're gonna have to stop because it's fresh uh, and hot. Womp womp. Yep, <laughs> I have to eat now. He ordered darn. the bacon hash. But I want to give a, a look into what's going on here. So yeah. you have a tutorial pulled up on your phone. Yeah, this is actually an old like Cosmo article of like how to do Farah's hair. And this is a very specific one of her hairstyles that's very like bang heavy and sort of curled inward. But this is to kind of give me a little more structured idea for curl pattern. So sizes and directions and that kind of thing. I'm just sort of using this as a vague template, but I've got a really crazy starting point and that's the look. Thanks for joining me. Just kidding. <laughs> this is going to I have a good feeling about this. I'm really, I very much appreciate your I wish we had some tape-ins though, like some tape-in hair oh, extensions. Oh, same. I mean, I, all of the like the prettiest transformations that I've seen on, you know, the internet vaguely have been like full reroutes or wigs or like, you know, full hard repaints. It's not been anything that's like Here's the, you know, exactly as she comes, like these are what you have to work with, incredible transformations. So I wanna sort of merge those two things together. I wanna have something that is both limited to what she would have come with and a slight enhancement because I am stubborn. <laughs> It's going to be good. And you're appreciating this more, I think, because we're not using tape-ins and extensions. We're working with what we got. Yeah. Sometimes you just got to work with what you got. But I don't like being told what I can't and can't, can and can't do very well. I, I, I struggle with that sometimes. So being, being restricted to like, this is all you have makes me itchy. Like I, I, that's a challenge. So I'm, I'm trying to merge the, the physical limitations with like, my own hubris. We'll see how this goes. <laughs> we'll see, but I should have brought some of my extensions from home and we could have, yeah, but they would have, it wouldn't have worked. No, we need to trim them and all that stuff. Yeah. Cause uh, I have, cl I have clip-ins that I used to wear all the time. I don't wear them anymore, but you know, for, for special events, it'd be fun to clip them in and just have some extra volume. But anyway, we're going to have lunch. We ordered from one of our favorite places. It's called the Bacon Social House and it's just right up the street. And we're gonna be back with more fare. So we're so excited you can hang out with us on this video and in our doll shop. See you in a minute. Hello, welcome back. <laughs> welcome back. So we just had lunch and Christopher has mostly her hair set. Yeah, we're about, I don't know, just low, just over halfway done. So this is just like a, I'm just starting a vague pattern for curlers. And uh, I'm gonna have to let this set actually because I don't quite have enough to do the whole thing, but I'm gonna let those dry and go multitask and then I'll be able to come back and finish this. Christopher's uh, over here. So what have I done? Uh, this, this, okay. this is the result of too small of rollers and cutting length off that I thought I had and I did not have to cut off. Um, is there cream cheese in my teeth? I just ate breakfast. <laughs> no, you're good. So what is the name of the mom from that 70s show? Paul, Google it and see the mom <laughs> on that 70s show. Oh, we'll, put no. in, we'll put in a picture of her. You know, not everything is a win, you guys. That is, there might be a way to still give this like God. Can you at least make it look cute? No, like, I don't know. Can she, can she? I need to look for a hat. I need to look for a big hat. Maybe we could do some, some French braids. Oh, well, I mean, I, yeah, I could give it like a style, but we'll see, we'll see what I can manage. It's not great, you Okay, guys. so how did we get here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, record scratch. You're probably wondering how we got here. Where do I start? Kitty Foreman. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Kitty, Kitty Foreman. We'll, we'll, yeah. Oh, goodness. Okay, so um, my thought process behind uh, getting to where I've arrived was that the hair came at all one length and Farah is known for these like cascading giant flowy curls that you would not get from curling multiple strands of the same length right like she has to have like kind of choppy tiers of hair to get the balloon effect that she's known for and when we got her somebody had taken like two rollers and just like pinned back the sides the way that I imagine a nine-year-old would have tried to do. It wasn't terrible, but I was like, I can improve on this. Um, famous last words. <laughs> um, I think, I think we've, we've created Kitty Foreman, but, um, I, I don't hate what happened. It's just not Farrah Fawcett. Um, <laughs> I will, uh, I am actually really excited to do some face alterations on this because I, I grabbed some 
artist pastels and some mediums for acrylics, and I, I want to give her, like, a little bit of a, a face makeover. That's where my skills actually come into play. I'm not a hair artist. I, I did do makeup for a long time. And so there might be a chance of at least improving on what we're working with for face. But, like, the hair is not it, you guys. I'm really trying. My understanding is that this set, ori oh my god, originally came with, that's so bad, like, not extensions, but, like, clips and falls and things, and that that would have helped to give her more, like, shoulder and bust length hair. I don't know. This is, this is, because when Christopher was, like, clipping some of the pieces like over an inch off and her hair was like oh, yeah. this short to start i was like because we've all been there we've all taken too much off at the salon and it's like dang it but hers doesn't grow back right my my mother is going to inevitably watch this and laugh because i used to give my you know like if i if i had like a cousin that was getting rid of like a hand-me-down secondhand doll i would I, I was always a perfectionist as a child and like if there was a hair out of place i would just take scissors to it and get rid of it and eventually all of these dolls became like you know the you know mid-40s thinning men uh hairdos i don't know i had a, i had a vision with this i actually you believe it or not i didn't take hardly any length off of the very back but i tried to create the <laughs> shape of hair that her haircut has but that was my first mistake. She should have hair that comes like down to here. But you know, it's giving kitty and that's it, okay. It is 70s. <laughs> it is still 70s. So, you know, in its own right, I don't think it's a total failure. But just ignore that this is supposed to be Farrah Fawcett, and I don't know, try to enjoy whatever, you know, mistakes, destinations take you to. Exactly. And that's one thing I told Christopher when he came in before we even saw what her curls looked like is that it's important to show that when it doesn't come out perfectly. Oftentimes on videos and social media, you just see all the perfection, all the talent, all the everything. And it's like, sometimes you have to go through a lot of steps to get there and it doesn't always turn out. We're gonna still show like the end result, but we're gonna let him finagle it a little bit and then we'll decide. What if I just cover it in bows? Can I just give her yes, like, lots of yes, ribbons? Yes, you can. Just give her lots of ribbons. Lean give into her... like goofy territory? No, give her like, uh, you know, Woodstock or something. Like, yeah. <laughs> you can put a bunch of flowers in her hair and, and give it like, you know, maybe a, a, a crown, like a crown of flowers like this. Yeah, that might not be bad. That could be cute. We'll... We're gonna figure it out. Um... Sometimes an accessory will just like save the day for your hair. So we'll see. Hello. <laughs> Hello. So we're back with Kitty. I love her eyebrows. Uh, thanks. I, I think they're they're at least more accurate to her actual eyebrows than what she came with. I was properly displeased with the absolutely vile little worms that she came painted on her face with. So <laughs> we had to evict the worms. I still don't know what my possibilities and, and destination is for this hair. We're going to play that. Just ignore the hair. <laughs> Just ignore the hair. <laughs> We're working on face now. And so I'm going to break out some of my soft pastels. This was just a little bit of thinning medium mixed into some old acrylics that we had to give me a little bit more slip and some more transparency that you could layer just one color on. Frankly, the, the brow color is a little bit red for me, but I actually added red to a otherwise very flat sort of charcoal brown that we had. I might go back in with really small flicks of like a dark, dark brown and maybe a highlight to sort of create that sort of caramely color that we've got in the low lights of the hair. But at least shape I'm happy with. That I can, that's a place to start. All right, back with our progress. Well, I'm in, in the middle of doing some light blending for eyes and cheeks. We're doing a little bit of shadow on Miss Farah slash Kitty. <laughs> If I, if I were doing this correctly, I would have layers of sealant between each application. But what I'm trying to do is create her really sort of signature heavy brow bone without taking... So I've, I've layered a couple different colors now. And if I were to just take like a really coarse brush, I would get rid of all of the layers that I just put down. So I'm, I'm just sort of tapping in a little bit of additional color with a Q-tip for depth and to blend without lifting what I've applied. And I want to create her sort of like big heavy brow bone, sculpts it out, you know, eye socket. She has a really deep inset eye. And I want to sort of create just, just depth before we move into black, because black's going to be, you know, really transformative when you're doing something like that. Everyone at home that's afraid of black eyeshadow, go put on a raccoon eye. That's my advice to you. Because you can always, I mean, like, you can always deepen the eye, but, like, if you're not wearing any black eyeshadow at all, ever, even for, like, your trip to the grocery store, that's your first problem. Go try something that gives you just a little bit of depth, a little bit of dimension, 
And uh, gray is a great way to do that, especially on her. Her complexion is so warm, dare I say, kind of orangey, that if you're to play with like a, a cool tone gray like this, this is actually almost blue, you'll create a really nice little bit of shadowy depth that doesn't look too, I don't know, like, like fake. You'll get a really sincere appearance of depth, like a true shadow would give you. And then uh, using like a really almost like a mustard brown for the shading of the cheeks and the shading of the eye. I'm just sort of being nerdy and having fun with color, but when I get something a little bit more transformative, I'll tap you back in. But that's that's sort of where we're at right now. Well, we are back. Christopher is almost done shading. Yeah, we've got, we're wrapping up the soft pastels. I think as far as depth goes, I'm happy with what that does for shaping. And then once you get on, like I did use black, but once you get on like a really nice dark charcoal brown a sweep of liner and then some dark painted lashes plus glued on ones, I think it's going to be a really nice uh, balance for depth. I'm going to go back and do a little bit of color correcting for the brows because they're just a little bit too warm for my liking. But they, now that they've set, they're not terrible with the low lights in the hair. I just, I want to get them a little bit cooler, a little bit more ashy. And then I think I want to do something with the mouth just to make it more defined because for me, it falls flat now, and if it's true in this stage, it's going to be even more so when you have everything, you know, the kitten caboodle on, you know, blush and lashes and whatever. I'm probably going to want to do like a little lip alteration, so we'll see what that looks like. But we're in the, the home stretch, you guys. I have... I have hopes, but not high ones, so we'll see where this takes us. So, I I think I've gotten to a good uh, satiating stopping point for myself. I, I still want this to feel stylized, I still want her to like look like almost like a cartoon, like a caricature of herself, but I've repainted just about everything. New eyebrows, I gave her lots of sculpting under the brow bone, into the eye socket, with some soft pastels. I repainted her irises and gave her some painted on lashes, but we're gonna do glue it on ones as well. Lots of sheen on the mouth and a little bit of points of highlight so that it's sort of stylized again, like dots of white in the eyes, dots of white sort of across the mouth, a little bit of shaping and some blush. I might even add a little bit more blush and then maybe I'll add some gloss to the eyes. I didn't think about that. That might be nice. Anyway, this is sort of where we are now. We've got some fun ideas for how to manage this hair that we've arrived at. It's not offensive, but it's not not offensive. Well, <laughs> so you had a great idea of of doing yeah. Jenny. So this is this is exactly as soon as I saw her beautiful face. This is exactly what it reminded me of Jenny in the end of Forrest Gump when she gets married. Yeah. I think we can. I think we can work with that. Um, I could fully just like wet this and start over, but that doesn't interest me. No, we I, have, we have uh, more things to do. <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I don't. I wouldn't feel good to do it either. Like I'm, I'm over it. But we could also probably. I don't know. Well, I, I'll, I'll see what to do with some, some silk flowers and leaves. But that's sort of where we've arrived for face, and I would say that's an improvement. I would say I think that she that's looks gorgeous. Well, thank you. It's, it's certainly been a lot of fun to, to do. And it feels a little bit like my previous career, but on someone that doesn't respond to me. So, like, again, gluing lashes onto not sentient people is much easier than ones that blink. So I'm going to go do that and show you what that looks like. All right. So one of my favorite accessories on a face is lashes. <laughs> Truly an accessory, yes. I'm getting just some classic Ardells. Um, these are individual clumps. They're not exactly extensions. I think that's misleading advertising. But these are individual clusters that you could apply just to, like, the outer corner of your people eyeballs to give you some extra oomph. They're also nice to sort of scatter in between if you already have like a decent set of full lashes but you want some length. Like these are these are a great thing to just pop two or three of on. But for something like dolls, I think this is it's easier to use than strip lashes and they often tend to be more I think convincing. I'm, I'm trimming the length of these for the lower lashes just because I, I don't want them to be insane. But she, I mean, a 70s Vera Fawcett I think needs a lower lash, so um, I'm using a like permanent glue. Uh, what is this paste? This is, it had a label. <laughs> this used to have a label. This is like a permanent. Oh, this is amazing glue. glue. This is, you're, thank you, it is, you're right. I don't know where the other one went. Yeah. One of them has a label, but. Anyway. They don't actually sell it anymore, but. It is amazing. It's it is amazing. Trying. Well, we'll check and see, but... I added a little bit of gloss to the eyes, and we've got some lashes that I think are really going to bring that together. All of those dots of glue will dry clear, but I might go back over the bands or the, the root of each lash and just give them a little sweep of that, like, dark charcoal that I used as liner. Um, I didn't use any black paint aside from the iris, the, the pupil of her eye, but I might do just a little bit of detailing under the lashes and see what that 
does for us, but I like this. I think she feels a little cartoony in a way that I actually was hoping would still translate, and uh, we'll have a we'll have a side by side pretty soon of like what we started with versus where we've ended. <laughs> Aside from the hair, and actually I don't hate the hair; it just was not my vision. I think. Like, mostly, I'm really satisfied with that. I think the face is really, really coming together for me. And is this more fun to do than subscription boxes? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say at large, yes. Not always. Sometimes actually really, it may sound silly, but I really enjoy the sort of, like, almost robotic. Yeah. Not quite, I don't want to say monotonous, because, like, that's not how it feels. But, like, it becomes almost meditative to mm -hmm. do, like, hundreds of boxes. At some point, you lose track of what you're actually doing. You get into some sort of flow, into some so sort of juice, and you just, like, get them done. Um, and I really do enjoy that. But I think what's so nice about that is that I have that as a break from something that would otherwise be asking creative juices from me, right? Like, a lot of my job is sort of improvising and creating or, or mending on the fly and finding ways to make something we already have nicer or work or better or whatever. And that requires some, a different kind of energy, and having both options is really nice to be able to toggle between. But this, this is an extra special fun project. I haven't been able to do makeup really at all in so long, so it's not exactly, but it, it's the same sort of artistry that I would do in my, you know, past life. And uh, I just, I've had so much fun. I, I've been joking with my friends, like, oh my god, you'll never believe it. I met a celebrity at work this week. And they're like, what? I'm like, I got to make over Farrah Fawcett. And they're like, okay, whatever, you know. It's, I've been, I've been really milking this joke for about a week now. So I'll be excited to see how she comes out in the end and what you guys think of her. It is really fun. Sorry, the lighting's crazy. But I, I agree with Christopher too, because a lot of my job is like a lot of thinking and a lot of sometimes stressful situations, honestly, as a business owner trying to figure out and trying to get stuff here on time, get it ordered on time, see what we're going to do. So when I have to do subscription boxes, it is nice because it's just a nice meditative release and right over on the other side of the room we are doing our grace subscription boxes for february which paul thankfully paul's in the background came in and worked let me just show you guys real quick just so you can kind of see what's going on in our day he came and he worked on saturday until 7 30 at night stuffing all of these and they look so good so uh, very thankful for that and we're getting those on the way as we're just doing other things so fear fly on the wall this is this is our game christopher's doing Farah. Paul and I are doing boxes, and you're watching this, and we love you. All right, so we're going to come back to Christopher when he has the eyelashes on, and we'll see about the hair. And we're back. Ba -ba -da -ba. You know, I I'm not mad about it. I'm not mad about it at all. I Here, tip her up a little so we can get in the light. There we go. Oh, yeah. There we can kind of see it. I am I'm really happy with the lashes. I think they really they contribute a nice a nice touch for sure. I think the use of texture in the paint and in the gloss and whatever is is nice. I I don't know. I think I think I'm happy with this. I didn't actually like I said in the beginning. I had no idea where this would go or what to expect. Uh, but I do think that like if that's if that's what they were telling me I should aim for that what I did is better than that. Is this the expectation for, like, a nine-year-old girl? Yes. <laughs> With that said, I'm not mad about it. I'm not mad. I think the, the little tiny touches of, of repainting really help. I think the there's sort of, like, a vacant expression in the eyes that she comes with, so I was happy to to maybe alter that a little bit. But she's she's very... I, I'm satisfied with the, with the face, and sure, I wish I had more hair, but uh, I think given what what I was what what came with her, I'm not mad about that. I think I mean I just threw on a little string of flowers that we had here in the shop and pinned those in with some hairpins. And I, I think probably the most profound differences for me are the brows, for sure. The the brows, I think, make a really big difference, and so do the lashes, of course. Um, I think blush is such a huge transformative element, and done well really makes a big difference. Believe it or not, I use, like, electric coral. So, like, if you if you are afraid of blush, I mean, you could pick up almost any color of blush at home, and the way you apply it makes such a difference. So play with some, some eyeshadow, play with some, some blush. I just used soft pastels. Again, if, if I were doing this right, <laughs> correctly, I would have had like a, a, a clear sealant done between each layer of, of things. So I'm not going around and like rubbing and, and touching the face because it actually probably would shift some. A lot of what I did was sort of detailing with Q-tips and just sort of stippling after I'd already 
brushed on or scrubbed on color. But I don't know. I, I think for I think for a sort of impromptu project restoration idea, this was very fun, and I'm satisfied with it. I think the hair's a little bit. It's not not Amish. <laughs> it's a little bit Amish Farrah Fawcett. But you know what? I that is that somehow is what the shop needs, isn't it? A, an <laughs> Amish Farrah Fawcett. She Speaking of right what in. the shop needs, where are we gonna put her? Oh my gosh! Whenever I I christen what my proper desk will be, I think she's gonna sit at the helm. I think I'm gonna have <laughs> okay. her greeting me when I come to work. That's a. I mean, she she could go easily anywhere, but the problem is we've got a lot of inventory, and I continue to like find nooks and crannies to put new things into, so it's becoming intimate. They're getting to know each other very well. We have lots of things, so I don't know if we have a really excellent corner to just position her in, but I I'm happy with that. I, I think that was that was a victory as far as I'm concerned. Hair, I learned my lesson, but other than that, I'm not mad. I will say, hair texture really came to life with the kit from Twin Pines that Dolls Parts sells. Amazing. Like, the, the detangler and conditioner is worth its salt, and it knows what it's doing. Worth the hype. There's so, such a nice luster and sheen in the hair that there wasn't before, so if there was one hair victory, it was that for sure. The the hot boil and, and conditioner detangler combo really, really worked for me, so I know that for the future. And maybe if I if I come across any other styling heads in the future, I will just be prepared with extra <laughs> extensions or wigs or something because she just she just does not have enough hair, you guys. I mean, it's just it's not a lot of hair. With all that said, I I stand by this. I think that works for me. So I wanted to bring her over from the back room in the back of the shop because we have a little bit more natural light here so that you can see. But I think she looks. Fantastic. Christopher is a wonderful makeup artist, and I feel like that this could be, we could do a whole little series because this is a total face up. And in doll terms, what we call a face up is either, well, he started from basically scratch, but a face up is where you take a, a, a face and you add to it and give it kind of a, a new life. But also, repaint artists, that's a really big thing, is, is taking the paint off of the doll and redoing it. And I am such a fan of that uh, with our Grace doll. That's what we did with the Sydney sculpt. We started with an existing sculpt, changed the makeup, and got a completely different doll. This is still giving me Jenny from her wedding in, in the Forrest Gump movie, and I love it. I think she looks really pretty, and she'll, I feel like we need a little, like, half outfit for her, like a little dicky scarf or something, you know, to, to dress her up a little bit, but what a fun little addition. Look at that. It's fun. Everything in our shop tells a bit of a story. If you've been with us for a while, then when you look at the different things that we have, you'll know the story, and when we, when we show a lot of our shop, a lot of it is our museum collection. The things are not for sale and we're very thankful that we can have such a luxury to show so many beautiful things and tell the stories and have beautiful things for our guests to look at without having to have everything be for sale and a lot of that is in part to our wonderful subscribers to our boxes so thank you for allowing us to have a little museum here which we love but this a lot of these things tell the story of our shop and if you've seen a lot of our recent just last videos you're gonna know the story behind a lot of these dolls, which I think is incredibly special. A lot of these I talked about in my mom's video with a lot of her favorite dolls. Some of them we've added to the shop. We just did an unboxing for the Lulu doll. This one is part of Jonathan Green's collection that I that I purchased to honor him. So many, so many different things. It's making me nostalgic and emotional actually to, to see it and to just do such a magical thing for a job. So I hope you enjoyed this. Christopher, you did a good job. He's filming. And we all had fun. So thank you for being a part of it. If you have more, more ideas for wants and hopes for future videos, make sure to drop them in the comments and make sure to subscribe so you never miss a thing. You can hit the notification bell and they'll let you know about everything we got going on. And also while I'm, while I'm giving our pitch here, we have a new calendar on our website that shows all the upcoming stuff. So you'll really never miss a thing. We have links and everything in, inside this video. So thank you very much. And um, thank you to everybody. I feel like I'm <laughs> at the Academy Awards, but this was, this was a fun one and we hope you enjoyed it. See you on the next one. Bye.